In this lecture, uh, today we will be discussing about fans, blowers and compressors. Actually fans, blowers and compressors, these are actually air, air handling devices or machineries which one will come across in many plants and industries. So, it is uh, imperative that we understand the special characteristics of these uh, machineries and how we can detect fault in them and what are the most common faults in them. Uh, before I get into the details of uh, the fault diagnosis in fans, blowers and compressors, uh, let me just briefly give you an example as to how different they are from say other machineries, fluid handling machineries like say pumps and turbines. Basically pumps and turbines handle fluid, it could be liquid or the sense of um, like water, other chemicals. But mostly when we talk about air handling devices, we talk about fans, blowers and compressors. So, the working fluid in fans, blowers and compressors is usually air or gas. See this uh, fluid handling devices. are very similar in principle uh, in, in, in their I would say principle or in their philosophy in, in comparison with electrical machines. So, the most common types of electrical machines are the motors and the generators. And the fluid handling devices are actually pumps and turbines. Okay. In one case, we give in work to get some increase in energy. In other case, it is that we given or uh, let me put this way, we, we given some energy to get some work and here we give some mechanical energy to get an output. Okay. So, in pumps or in motors, we give some energy to get an work output and the reverse is true in the case of turbine, we give some work to get an output. Okay. Now, coming back to this air handling devices. So, we talked about fans, blowers and compressors. These fans, blowers and compressors are different in the sense that they all work in the with the fluid which is air in all the cases and we give in some extra energy from the outside okay, to get some output out of these systems. Now, what is this output we are talking about? Basically, if you all know the Bernoulli's equation. So, the energy is constant. So, we play around with the pressure head constant okay. and we have to play around with the pressure head or the velocity head. So, basically in fans, blowers and compressors, we try to increase the pressure at the output by giving in more energy, pressure by mean pressure of the fluid or air in this case. Now, in many industrial applications, what are the probable industrial applications? 
So, if you see the industrial applications, see fans, though I have written them as mostly axial, blowers are centrifugal and compressors as actual rotary or reciprocating, they can all be of the, both uh, the, all the three types, but usually fans are considered to be axial where there is no much pressure variation between the input and the output can be taken as a fan. No significant pressure difference. So, how that is done? Basically, we have in a casing a set of blades this is a casing, these are the blades, fan blades and this is the hub, which is made to rotate, which is made to rotate by an power and then because of this either and they are all in a casing. So, this could be axial. So, wherein I have a set of hubs okay. and these blades are usually at an angle and so I will slightly increase the pressure okay, between station 1 and station 2 there will be increase in pressure and that is essentially a fan. Now, the industrial application, the reason I am uh, explaining you the industrial applications is we will see what are the ways these equipment or these fluid handling machineries can have a defect and how we can identify them. So, there is a very important uh, application on this fan, particularly in power plants. See what happen in power plant to generate stream the boilers are given heat energy and we get steam and which drives a turbine which drives an electrical generator and we have the electrical power. And this is the and this is in the, 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 the steam cycle, the Rankine cycle. Now, the whole problem is to give this heat energy, I have to burn fuel and this case it is coal, pulverized coal. Okay. Now, this is burned, I will not go into details of how, how these are burned, okay. uh, fluidized bed uh, combustion systems are there. But so, what happens because of this burning of the coal, lot of flu gases evolve or and they have to be expelled or exhausted and they may be containing certain poisonous gases. So, they are actually and they may be cont uh, containing lot of um, particles. So, they are actually made to go out of a very high chimney, height and this is the chimney okay. and the rho g h is the pressure head. So, obviously, for 
this height has to be maintained because we 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 do not want these gases to be coming out of places where they could be harmful to people. So they have to be given a certain energy so that they can all go out that draft height of the chimney. Now it may so happen this exhaust gases which come we have to give some extra energy and that is what is known as a forced draft fan or in short F D fan. Now, this is one application of industrial fans, same as to when we want air to come into at pressure for some combustion and that is known as the induced draft fan. Okay. Now, similar to the fan, the fans can be centrifugal also, but I can have series of such fan fans in one unit and they are usually known as blowers. The idea is to give in, give out of the system these uh, fluid at high pressure okay, to a system where the uh, fluid is required at uh, high flow rates, high pressure and so on. So, external mechanical energy is given to the fans and blowers and this energy is converted to the pressure head of the fan okay, or uh, velocity head depending on the application. Suppose, I want to have more flow rate, more velocity I can for the same area. Okay. this is the area. So, the flow rate is V times A. So, if I want more flow rate, I have to give in air at high velocities. Okay. Many applications require a certain volume flow rate of air in the process, particularly in blast furnaces. Okay blast furnaces there are rings of tubes okay okay and air is fed in to the blast furnace around this ring okay at high flow rates how can that happen so if i have a series of blowers in the plant okay and they can be all giving energy to the air and then this air is fed to the blast furnace at a high flow rate and this is what is done by the applications of blowers. Many a times in the air conditioning system, heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems. Uh, the reason I am uh, telling you this is I just wanted to give you a flavor of what are the industrial applications of fans, blowers and compressors. So, we will ourselves realize what are the ways these things can go wrong. So, I would like to first introduce you to the fan blowers and compressors and then we will come to what are the effects and how defects are created and then how they are diagnosed. So, HVAC systems many a place many a times in rooms we have diffusers on the ceiling and which are connected to ducts. Okay, which brings in cold air in an AC system and these are actually felt fed by a blower okay. and these are known as the AHU air handling 
unit. Basically, the way the air handling unit works is on the refrigeration system, I have a chiller okay, on which through which air is blown in and by heat transfer air becomes cold and this cold air is given into the room. So, there this calls for a blower. And again the pressure differences are not much be it the fans and the blowers. Okay. However, the most important or high pressure device is a compressor. Okay. In compressors what happened the objective is to have high pressure and as a ma as an effect the density of fluid also increases. A good example is the turbo charger in an IC engine driven by the exhaust gases which are used to compress in the inlet air. So, that the density of inlet air increases. So, that for the same given volume I can have more mass of air coming to my system for combustion. Okay. So, high pressure. Now, these compressors are basically can be of axial, axial flow compressors. They can be rotary the sense or what is known as the centrifugal compressor. It will look something like this. The centrifugal compressor there are sets of veins okay, and then this is the discharge and this is known as the I and these are the compressor veins and this is the discharge. Okay. And of course, we have the reciprocating compressors I will and then few other positive displacement compressor. I will go to the details of compressor classification maybe in the next slide. So, this is how the compressors are classified. They can be positive displacement as opposed to dynamic or turbo compressors. Positive displacements can be rotary, one red rotor or sliding vane or liquid ring or single screw. And in positive displacement basically there are lobes which look like number 8. These, these, these are put in a casing okay. and this is a lobe, rotor lobe, so two rotors and they, they move in a particular uh, direction and then this air gets compressed. These are positive displacement uh, rotary compressors and they are uh, they generate which are known as very very high pressures. The advantage of such positive displacement compressors is in small space I can very easily generate a uh, high uh, compressed uh, line. In many chemical operations K 
chemical process applications high pressure air is required high pressure air and this would call for such uh, compressors. Of course, I just uh, told you about the axial flow compressor and the centrifugal flow compressors and many times these compressors have set of veins, set of veins which are mounted on a hub either axially, radially and they are set at an angle and many times in compressors we have veins which are rotating and veins which are stationary which are in the casing or the stator and they can work as guide veins. That is some sets of veins are fixed and then we have another rotor with maybe another set of veins. So, I can have multi stage veins and so on and all of these compressors are basically again if you are talking about dynamic compressors they are turbo machineries. So, all the rotor dynamic principles which we have studied earlier apply to such fluid handling devices. So, essentially these shafts they could be long which contain may be a single set of veins or multiple set of veins they have to be supported on bearings they have to be supported on bearings and then they can be long they can be flexible depending on the principles of rotor dynamics and we and they are of course mounted in a casing maybe with an appropriate inlet and discharge depending on the configuration ok. So, because they are supported on bearings of course, you know this this could be internal of course, the 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 faults could be many and the way to identify this faults is what I will discuss next. So, in such fans, blowers and compressors for its fault diagnosis, what are the parameters one needs to monitor? Flow rate is very very essential because of the fact that my primary objective was to get an high flow rate ok in case of the blowers or in compressors to get high pressure. So, the flow rate measuring devices could be a mass flow meter ok and many a times because this uh, compressors increase the pressure there is also the increase in the temperature ok and you know particularly bearings because see some effect of this uh, compressors operation is going to affect the auxiliary devices particularly if the compressor is defective the bearings may be go bad. How do the bearings go bad? Because of the fact of high temperature you know some of this rotors of the compressors are supported at the ends by anti friction bearing 
and these anti friction bearings have a layer of uh, lubricant. Okay. Now, because of high temperature, the lubricant can get baked. By baked, I mean they will burn and they will become hard deposits, hard deposits and then they will form as an uh, imperfect impurity in the races and give rise to the source of vibration. So, we have to monitor in compressors always the temperature and temperatures are monitored by RTD resistance temperature detectors or even we have thermocouples permanently mounted. So, in the machinery maintenance unit usually they monitor the temperature of these bearings of the compressors and <coughs> if there is a bearing defect in terms of the, the because somebody would not like the temperature usually it is avoided it should be the temperature of the bearing should be less than 75 degrees Celsius and that is the recommended principle in the industry to have the temperatures of bearings less than 75 degrees Celsius that has to maintain to maintain such a temperature it of course has to be monitored always and RTDs and thermocouples are installed around the bearings of the fans compressors and the um, blowers. And another very important parameter which has to be always measured is also the rotational speed which I will come later on when I talk about the vibration. But then another most important thing is the pressure. If there is a pressure loss in the line, okay, we have to look into the why the there is loss in pressure loss and many times you would have seen in the industries. shop floors compressed air is used for all pneumatic tools pneumatic tools like spanners screw drivers etc are driven by pneumatic tools then we have uh, for cleaning for painting etcetera. So, many auxiliary plant operations are using compressed air and they usually have a compressed air line okay, on out of which this coil kind of things are coming and they are handheld nozzles. They will be and held nozzles. Okay, and whenever there is a fall in pressure be beyond a certain line and these uh, compressors are actually regulated by a pressure switch. So, when the pressure drops below a certain level, the circuit will enable the compressor to start operating again and then store in compressed air usually in a large reservoir. And of course, these are designed for a particular pressure. So, as a precaution, this compressed air cylinders or reservoirs should not be able to should not store pressures higher than they are designed for and that is why this pressure regulator switch is very important. Okay. So, this pressure sensors are basically if they are static we can have the bodon tube pressure gauge. For real time pressure monitoring, 
use what is known as the piezo electric pressure gauges okay now another very very important parameter is this vibration so what are the sources of vibration in a fan blower or compressor because some of them are very high speed rotor dynamic devices and because of any amount of unbalance will give rise to vibrations now how does unbalance occur in the first place if a plant is new you saw this uh, case of the id or fd fan which are exposed to the flue gases so many times what happens the ash gets deposited in on the blades fan blades and mind you over the years this over the years you know because these uh, ash they could be sometimes you know with with the moisture they could be wet and they will form like a sludge okay this is the ash sludge which gets deposited and then it creates an unbalance in the fan and i have seen many a times in the power plants particularly because of these getting neglected in the very first day because they think it's a new plant you now what would go wrong with the fan fan is okay behaving okay but what happens is the uh, fans because of such unbalanced um, uneven distribution of the masses first of all the stresses become high okay many times failure cracks occur cracks at hub roots okay and then unbalance this leads to a vibration and mind you if all of these goes unnoticed they will eventually affect the uh, bearings because these sets of impellers can be either overhang or they could be supported in the center this kind of a scenario or many times they are overhanged okay now this could be your blades and this is the origin of vibration one is unbalance because of deposits unbalance because of manufacturing defects can happen and of course leads to bearing defect and this will lead to mechanical failure usually the problem with such idf defense is because they are outside the plant machinery unit they are outside the shop uh, shop area they are somewhere very close to the chimney base of the chimney and nobody actually uh, periodically monitors them and i have seen in many thermal power plants suddenly an fd fan bearing broke excessive vibrations from the fd fan the blade of the fd fan is missing now these are scenarios which one has come across in the industry and why this happened was nobody really noticed it 
but nowadays with the advanced uh, instrumentation online automated instrumentation wherein we have permanently mounted vibration sensors on these compressors or fans or blowers both for temperature and vibration so these levels can be monitored and of course algorithms are there which will take corrective measures in terms of shutting down the machinery or giving you enough alarm as to something's wrong with this system and then they need to be taken care of now associated with vibration obviously is noise but nobody uses noise as a condition monitoring tool for fans blowers and compressors but they definitely at high speeds these axial flow compressors and particularly the root roots blowers are very noisy because of the positive displacement nature and opening and closing of the uh, you know, uh, valves and at very high speeds this create problem and they rotate these lobes are at very close tolerance okay so it's not to be alarmed that because of high noise there is something wrong with the system but this roots blowers positive displacement compressors they are very very noisy okay many of the material handling equipment in plant they also rely on compressed air line to transport uh, soft items conveyors pneumatic conveyors <coughs> in many plants these pneumatic conveyors or compressed air lines are used for conveying things okay and another very important parameter nowadays you know all these compressors or the uh, fans blowers who's driving them the prime mover in all the cases is usually an induction motor usually in such systems we do not have a gearbox so basically this is a motor and then there is a coupling and then there is a fan unit fan unit which could be a axial flow fan could be a centrifugal blower or so on now usually there is no gearbox and this is actually a coupling <coughs> and they are put on their respective foundations okay and they are uh, nicely anchored because some of these motors could be as high as a uh, thousand horsepower you know, particularly in uh, steel plants where uh, we require uh, such high pressure air to be fed to the blowers for combustion they they have very very high power motor and if this motors <coughs> and the centrifugal blowers of course they are not in is in perfect alignment there will be a misalignment so all the problems associated with rotating machines which we have studied so far in terms of unbalance looseness uh, misalignment um, foundation bolt uh, loose okay they all manifest as vibrations but apart from vibrations we can also because see what happens because if there is a defect in this veins it is going to give a and this defect say for example unbalance so this unbalance is going to create a sinusoidal variation in the force torque variation level so this kind of variations do come as a load torque onto the motor so because of this load torque the current drawn by the motor also changes and it gets
it gets current becomes amplitude modulated. So, I had told you about this motor current signature analysis or maybe we will uh, study in few of the classes uh, previous or lectures on motor current signature analysis. So, M C S C A can also be used to monitor the defects in the fans, blowers and compressors, but from the vibration spectrum. So, we can also find out the characteristics of all these fans, blowers and compressors is what is known as the fan vein pass vein pass frequency or what is known as the blade pass frequency. Which is nothing but number of veins or blades times the rotational speed. So, for example, if there are 20 veins and the fan was running at 1200 rpm, so this is 1200 by 60. So, this is close to uh, 2400 hertz. So, in the vibration spectrum, I will definitely see peaks at uh, this, this corresponds to how much uh, 20 hertz. I will see peaks at 20 hertz, 40 hertz, maybe 60 hertz and of course, all the way so, this is 20 or which is known as 1 x, 2 x, 3 x and then of course, 400 hertz this is the vein pass frequency some virus in amplitude. Okay. So, the occurrence of this vein pass frequencies and sometimes side bands around this vein pass frequencies indicate the condition of the condition of the compressor. So, we talked about an IOSA standard depending on the power of the machine. In this case, the machine being a fan, a blower or a compressor, there are limits as to what is the maximum amount of vibration level which can be withstood by such a machinery, but this does not tell us what is wrong with this vein pass frequency or what is wrong with this fan blower or compressor. So, if we do a detailed diagnosis usually by vibration monitoring, we will find out this vein pass frequencies and side bands around the vein pass frequency and there will be change in the vein pass frequency if number of blades change and all the theory behind the vibration monitoring which you have discussed earlier as to where to put the vibration sensors in the case of fans, blowers or compressors. We can still use the bearing housings. Now, if I, the bearing housings are not accessible, we can come close to the casing or close to the foundations and many times people are also using a lot of laser based measurements. or measuring the torsional vibration. Okay. I can find out missing veins because <coughs> we just mentioned about the compressor and when, when, when we talk about the gas turbines, I will talk about multi stage compressors. Okay. compressors, there is usually a low pressure compressor, 
because as you know as soon as you compress the temperature will increase okay and we have to have an intercooler okay and then uh, intermediate or a high pressure compressor because the limits of compression also limits you to how much you can compress in a given volume or given stage so there are multi stage compressors uh, particularly in uh, the gas turbines okay these are the compressors and then of course you have the combustion system and then we have the turbines okay so the compressor and turbine particularly in an aircraft engine when we talk about uh, turbines i'll talk about this aircraft engine compressors and then we have the combustion system now in such a case <coughs> because the temperatures are very very high one has to be careful as to how to monitor the vibrations and and so high temperature vibration monitoring is a special application for particularly for gas turbines of course nowadays there are accelerometers available which can measure charge type close to about 600 degrees celsius but beyond that we cannot possibly measure vibrations through contact type uh, laser, um, accelerometers but then we have to go for the non contact type laser based systems of course uh, uh, there are many challenges in uh, condition monitoring of fans blowers compressors particularly for high pressure and high temperature applications aircraft engines there are challenges and you know, whether to monitor vibration or whether you know, the reliability robustness of the measurement system such high temperatures and pressures also play a major role we, you know simple uh, plant level idfd fans you know ahu blowers they are very standard uh, they are very easy to monitor and diagnose we can put an accelerometer on the bearing housings measure the vibrations level uh, do an fft find out the spectrum find out the vane pass frequencies that's pretty good but think of an aircraft engine or think of an uh, uh, such a gas turbine unit used for marine marine propulsion systems when you talk about gas turbines at such high temperatures there are challenges as to can vibration monitoring be made what about rubs you know what if the compressor vanes try to touch the casing what if they foul with the stator blades so there are very serious issues you know to detection of rubs in compressors detection of uh, the misalignment in such uh, stages of compressors um, kind of in many compressors uh, imagine one blade is in perfectly fit or has a small amount of unbalance and you know, we are talking about speeds of 30000 rpm such high rotational speeds you will see that the uh, unbalance uh, forces are so high that they can have determinant effect on the bearings again what type of bearings do we need particularly in land based systems you know we can have uh, because the rotor weights are itself so high we need to have hydrodynamic bearings okay and what are the stability issues of hydrodynamic bearings with in terms of the temperature in terms of the uh, oil viscosity okay and th these are uh, serious issues which need to be looked into so what are the essential components which we can uh, monitor in a 
compressor or uh, even in a uh, blower. Of course, the bearing and uh, bearing means bearing temperature and vibration and and a very essential important point in this compressor of air particularly when we are handling gases which should not interfere with the system. We have to design of certain seals okay. Uh, we have to design of certain seals which are made to rotate with the shaft okay, so that they do not come in contact okay, so and these actually press against the surface with the spring. So, seals are there okay, to avoid a leakage. So, the seal leakage is a particularly when we are doing gas monitoring or uh, sorry not uh, gas compression. So, many special features are there whether the seals have uh, worn out its wheels wear, wear, wear out, we will have wear debris collected in the casing and then blades could be cracked, unbalanced, missing, casings can be cracked. So, then we can use NDT techniques. So, these are some of the techniques by which these uh, machineries can be monitored. These are the components bearing, seals, blades and casing cracks. Okay. Thank you.